All right, everyone. So welcome back here for the 90 days challenge. This is Gaurav Shah from School of Travels and I've welcomed you to this challenge. We are on the mission number seven this week. Uh, so far, we have started with uh, Dockerate, uh, talked about containers for a couple of weeks. We then went on to talk about Git, uh, Pipelineit. We completed a mission on building CI pipelines. Then we talked about cloud and uh, have completed two missions on the cloud, one on building infrastructure on cloud, second to auto scale that. Today, we're going to continue with that journey with automating the cloud provisioning with Terraform, one of the most interesting and exciting tools of today and a very prominent tool in the space of DevOps as well in terms of how do you automate uh, infrastructure as a write by writing infrastructure as a code, how do you write, you know, automate cloud infrastructure in general that is where Terraform really, really shines because it has integration with different cloud platforms and uh, it's not specific to one, like unlike cloud formation or uh, unlike Ansible as well, it is very specific, you know, uh, automation tool specifically catered towards automating the cloud components. Like you want to build cloud infrastructure, set up network components, compute, databases, uh, any other, you know, a uh, component of a cloud, uh, there's a good possibility that Terraform has it, right? So first of all, I welcome you all of you. Uh, I see Deepak, I see, I don't see the names of the people who are attending. Uh, so you can say hi, feel free to say hi in the chat. Uh, I do see some names now, Abhishek, Ravi, Ajay, Swati, Prema, Sharad, Madala, Shiva Prasad. So welcome all of you. And let's get started with uh, today's challenge and uh, we're talking about Terraform this week and let's get started with that. I will talk about the introduction to Terraform first and then I would demonstrate to you how you can build a two-tier infrastructure with application server and database using Terraform by launching some key services like compute and databases and uh, maybe networking and so on and so forth, right? Uh, we'll have some simple demonstrations here and uh, uh, you'll actually learn what are the components of Terraform, what are the primitives you should know about in, in terms of Terraform. And you will be able to get build a solid foundation on concepts and you will start understanding how Terraform works uh, with an example uh, that I'm going to present here. Right, so uh, let's begin talking about what is Terraform in the first place. Let's suppose you are a startup and you have an idea, maybe a cab hailing service that you're building. And let's say you start with an idea and build a prototype and you build it and deploy it to the cloud directly. Right? So you're starting, you're just trying out your idea prototype. So one cloud and you build it manually, that's fine. But then your prototype is su successful and then you start need to start building and scaling up that infrastructure. And then you start launching it to production uh, because it's a successful experiment. Now you want to go and build an organization around it, building uh, other or incorporating other components from the same cloud. Like in addition to compute and databases, maybe autoscaler, maybe DNS service, maybe CDN for content delivery, uh, S3 for storage and so on, right? And then you get funded, you start growing, and then you need to start scaling up. Maybe think about provisioning your infrastructure in different regions. Maybe you want to cater to different geography uh, and you start scaling up from there and you want to maybe use hybrid cloud platforms as well. So if you look at the evolution of this infrastructure, you start with, you know, some components and then keep on adding more and then you grow and duplicate that in different regions, different geographies, maybe start incorporating hybrid cloud cloud system as well. And that's when you need some tool which will help you uh, you know, with various life cycle aspects of this infrastructure, how it evolves, right? Starting with you want to provision and build your infrastructure. That is your day zero, day one uh, setup and day two onwards, you want to iterate, update over it. So you want to push changes to your infrastructure constantly. It keeps on constantly evolving. And then, you know, you will have more people you're collaborating with who manage this infrastructure. So you need to have a proper way to collaborate uh, as well. And you keep on adding more services. You keep on repeating that process of scaling, using different regions, multi clouds, and so on and so forth. And then at the end of the uh, day, so some part of the infrastructure keeps on getting deleted as well, destroying and, you know, gives way to the new one as well. And all of this is what Terraform helps you manage. 
right from provisioning day one to day zero to day one to day two um, onwards uh, any change management to your infrastructure you want to delete some you want to start collaborating with different people um, managing this infrastructure terraform gives you a proper mechanism to do that and that's the reason why you would want to use a tool like terraform here now what all can it do for you that is terraform it helps you provision infrastructure with variety of cloud platforms through the providers that it has the strength of the terraform comes from the provider that it has so it has an ecosystem of providers which help it connect to different cloud platforms right from aws to azure to gcp to heroku to kubernetes to uh, some services like not only cloud platforms like you have dns service it will automatically update the dns for you right you have a monitoring service it can also help you automate or add your infrastructure to that monitoring service it can provision all of those components as well so it does that through the providers so that's one thing that it does it integrates with different cloud platforms and helps you manage the infrastructure components across it it helps you do that with a simplified common interface or a language and that is what you write as this code in the form of hcl which is a declarative abstracted item important language hcl stands for hashicorp configuration language it's a simple declarative language that you use to define what you want rather than writing the code to how to achieve it that's what we do with scripts you're not writing scripts you're just writing a simplified version of the infrastructure code that's what you're doing right so um let's say then we allow you to check before apply this is a very important and a key feature of terraform which sets it apart from tools like ansible where you can actually plan which looks at the configuration looks at the uh, queries the status from the cloud and it compares it and tells you what it is going to do and what it is not right and why and all of that right so it gives you that plan of what are the resources it's going to create what are the resources it's going to update and uh, so on and so forth right so that's the terraform plan uh, uh apart from that it allows you to define or collaborate right when you have more people managing the infrastructure um, you don't want people to overstep somebody else's work like you have started building some part of your cloud and somebody else comes and start modifying that same instance or a cloud plat component you don't want that to happen so it streamlines it through something called as a state file which is typically stored remotely everybody has access to that so if somebody has been working on or provisioning something it will lock that state as in nobody else can make a change so that's when i said collaboration is where terraform also streamlines that process through the state management um, and that's what you can do with the remote state management as, as it is called uh, and it has this library of usable code which means that you don't have to write everything you can you don't have to reinvent the wheel you can use a lot of modular available code like you want to automate something related to cloud like aws uh, you know or azure or maybe kubernetes or maybe um, you know a dns system there is a pre existing module available so that you don't have to write that code yourself you can just take that code invoke it and then get this get that thing done right so simplified uh, management simplified uh, you know let's say when you start automating a lot of things get you know are already available to you as a library you can also comply with security practices because you have this concept of policy libraries which help you automate uh, compliance checks and benchmarks and apply those configurations and all of that as well so you have this policy libraries which you can invoke and then automatically it configures and brings your system in uh, compliance as well so it can do all of that for you right that's terraform for you uh, you can start posting your questions in the chat and the question Q and A section. By the way, you'll see it on this side of the screen. And I already have a few questions. So there's one question from Ravi about how do we log into the website? Kind of wanted to look at the 90-day challenge. Um, Ravi, right now we don't have any, um, let's say, a trial period or anything like that. 
but you write to learn at school of devops and we'll see what we can do anyways if you become a member um you can anyways look at it and we do have a refund policy as well for that matter but if you um just write an email and we'll look at look into that and see what we can do about it all right so that's about uh, uh, that question you have if you have any specific question related to terraform or otherwise do start posting it on the q a and the chat as well all right so next component uh, that i want to talk about is uh, how terraform works right so terraform has this core the terraform core which integrates with the um, different cloud providers through the provisioners there and then you write the code in the form of resources modules and we call it as a terraform config using the hashicorp com configuration language and you provide it to the core which then integrates with different pro uh, you know different cloud through providers and that's what you do with terraform apply which also generates a state file so once it has applied it will generate a state file which contains the configuration that has been applied and that state and then if anything that diverges from that state you can bring it into the state again and it maintains that state file throughout the runs as well which you can store locally or which you can store it remotely as well so uh, and based on that it keeps on comparing the changes and uh, compares with actual infrastructure right so the state file and the actual infrastructure and if any divergent configuration it will try to bring it into uh, compliance from there right so that's uh, how terraform works and apart from that you can either approve it manually every time you use apply it will ask you to approve or you can also set up an auto approval here once you have applied it uh, you can keep on applying the changes and finally you can destroy using terraform destroy which is just a terraform apply minus d command but there is a specific separate command created for that called as terraform destroy which can be used to delete the state uh, delete basically the uh, infrastructure you know that you have uh, created with that configuration now uh, how does it differ from ansible key parts are uh, it's a very specific tool for cloud automation whereas ansible is more generic when it comes to cloud automation uh, there are a lot of depth that terraform offers and additional features like state management collaboration parallelism of resources so faster execution and wider support for resources is are some of the key features of it uh, apart from that what happens is ansible uh, used to be very popular at some point of time but docker and kubernetes have taken over the configuration related to applications and so on so what you're left with is just cloud provisioning and some system configuration for which the cloud provisioning part terraform does it much better than ansible and it's much simpler so that's the reason why it is getting very popular if you look at terraform versus cloud specific configuration automation tools like cloud formation or azure arm templates uh, this is multi cloud same language same interface to talk to multiple clouds multiple other softwares as well it's it gives you all the advantages of modular code declarative simpler code multiple environments state file uh, collaboration and so on so this is has some advantages over cloud formations and so on right the only advantage cloud formation or some tool is you know it is very tightly integrated with aws and it is more secure because you're running inside the cluster uh, apart from that terraform is a much better tool in terms of automating the cloud platforms and that's the reason why it is very popular today uh, i'm going to show you a use case where i'll be deploying a web server and using ec2 and database using rds and part of it i will run manually part of it with terraform there's also a very specific reason why I'm running this manually because I want to import the configuration into Terraform and Terraform has a very specific feature which is very interesting from that point of view. Uh, Dinesh has a question. I'm going to take one. Uh, is Terraform open source? There was a news that IBM has uh, taken over Terraform and made it closed source. Now, let's suppose uh, IBM takes over HashiCorp right uh, who created the terraform as a tool is uh, is basically hashicorp as an organization so terraform is open source tool there is a paid version of it which gives you there's an enterprise version of it as well uh, which gives you some additional features and whatnot terraform cloud and all of that 
But um, what we use mostly and most of the organizations, what Terraform they use is mostly an open source tool. And that Terraform core is open source. And that's what we typically use. And that is very, very powerful. And even if let's suppose IBM uh, buys the company or acquires HashiCorp, they'll still keep Terraform as open source or there would be a fork of it. So you don't really have to worry about it because the community will always find a way around it. For example, when Oracle bought Sun Microsystem, there was a similar concern related to MySQL. So, so community created a fork of it called, called as MariaDB. Fortunately, MySQL is still an open source tool. Similarly, IBM has already bought Ansible through Red Hat because Red Hat is part of IBM now. So uh, Ansible, there is still an open source version of it. There is an enterprise version of it as well. And it was already there even before IBM acquisition of Red Hat. So it is there. Uh, but that doesn't hurt your open source thing. So you still can continue using open source uh, version of it, Ansible. And the enterprise version they're trying to integrate with now the um, IBM has IBM Watson AI. So they are integrating that with the, the enterprise version and all of that. So those are the additional features. But uh, even if let's suppose Terraform is acquired indirectly by any other organization, not just IBM, uh, my opinion is it will remain open source. So you don't have to worry about it too much. If not, community will find a way around it, right? And there are other alternatives coming around as well, like cross-plane with uh, Kubernetes and so on. Uh, there's a question from Jan Majay. Once we deploy cluster through Terraform, is it possible other changes like config changes or machine pool edit may possible with the help of Terraform? Yes. Uh, typically, the changes to the component that you're creating for example you created an ec2 instance i'm just giving a simple example and you want to modify that you can do it via terraform you can also import your existing infrastructure which is not part of terraform into terraform as well there is a way to do that too so it is possible as long as it is a cloud specific component it is possible to keep on modifying that through terraform all right now We've talked about some of the uh, concepts related to Terraform, like what, um, you know, what is what, like providers, the uh, language, Terraform plan, state file, the advantages of what Terraform can do for you, how Terraform works. We looked at some comparison with some tools. Uh, let's look at how we're gonna deploy this. So in terms of the architecture that is going to be used for this application, there will be a VPC. We'll just use a default VPC. I'm not creating a VPC with Terraform now, right now as part of this demonstration because we have a short amount of time. So I will use the existing VPC, but within that VPC, I would show you by launching this web server. And then that would connect to the database, which would be in the VPC subnet and uh, that is how and we can also automate the configuration so that when the web server is created it knows about the database and it can automatically connect to the database and so on so that is the configuration that i'm going to show you here now what are the things that you should know about what are the components of terraform you should know about one is the provider provider is the first thing that we will configure in order to start automating and connecting to some cloud platform or some platform some tool and that could be AWS as a provider, Azure as a provider, GCP as a provider. And through the provider, Terraform can connect to that cloud platform and automate things by calling the APIs and so on. So that's how it integrates with different tools and the platforms. Next component is a resource. Resource is how you automate the state of a particular cloud component. For example, when you create an EC2 instance, there is a resource called as an AWS instance. That's how you manage it. You can manage a key pair through an instance, through a resource. You can manage a security group. You can manage a volume. You can manage uh, anything that you can create on a cloud platform has a typically resource. There are hundreds and hundreds of resources available for you. I will show you Terraform registry. That's where you will find the providers. And this is where you'll find many different providers, including the major cloud platforms, AWS, Azure, GCP, Kubernetes, Alibaba, uh, Oracle Cloud. There are different tools like Consul, uh, there's Azure Stack, there is DNS service, there is HEM, there is Nomad, there is, uh, you know, Vault. Terraform Cloud is the enterprise version of it managed by, you know, 
most of the organizations have that open source plus the enterprise version of it as well right because the development also gets sponsored by the enterprise uh, activities there so it is always a good idea to have that kind of a thing and then you have different other providers as well and when it comes to let's say aws there are like tons of resources available with that provider this is a provider look at the documentation you can see that there are so many components and then each of that component has so many resources let's just look at uh, ec2 for example we're looking at hundreds of components and out of that ec2 is one and EC2 has these many resources. You can manage EC2 AMI copy, a fleet, a host, a e elastic IP, uh, key pair, an instance, and each of this is a resource that we're talking about. So you can just understand the scale of things here. Uh, this is just one resource belonging to EC2 as one component. There are hundreds of components resulting in possibly thousands of resources just for AWS. And then we can keep on counting for Azure and for other platforms and whatnot, right? So that's the scale of things uh, that you can automate with Terraform, really. All right. So uh, Surabhi has a question. Is it anyhow related to bridge driver for database and ODBC moving uh, DBN servers? Uh, you need to elaborate a bit on that question. What is... Um, you know, is it RDS? Is it what exactly um, the question is? So if you can elaborate, I can answer that. Kunal has a question about how to join the 90 days course. Um, 90 days course and the challenge and the rest of the courses you can join via the uh, memberships that we have with School of DevOps. So School of DevOps, if you look at the memberships, so I would recommend you join the nerd membership. Uh, one year, this gives you access to all the courses, not just this 90 day course and the challenge, but all the courses which are like in-depth courses on, for example, DevSecOps, GitOps, Terraform, Ansible. We have a detailed course on Terraform, uh, Ansible, Docker, Kubernetes, uh, CICD. I'm adding more courses like AWS EKS, uh, Argo CD. So those are the courses I'm in works. So you basically get access to all our library of courses through this membership platform. I'm sharing a, a coupon code. So this is the discounted value. On top of that, we have an offer. I'm sharing that offer for anyone who wants to join uh, right now. You should be able to do that. Now, for the next 15 minutes, you can get it at a discounted, even better discounted price uh, that you can uh, get it at uh, if you want to join. Okay. So that's the offer, which is running on the screen. And uh, uh, that's how you join the challenge. Okay, so Surbi has mentioned a um, comment, machine backups or VMs. So again, if, uh, if it is related to Terraform, if you can frame that question completely, that would help me. Um, if Terraform is related to bridge driver for databases or DBC, no, it is not. Uh, Terraform is just an, if the question, if I understand it correct, Terraform is not uh, similar to that. It is more of, more or less like, uh, if you're talking about providers, providers have some configuration that you can use to connect to the cloud platforms. But beyond that, Terraform is much more than uh, just a driver you can compare. Uh, we talked about resources, we talked about pro provi uh, providers. Then we have variables, inputs and outputs. So you can also seek inputs from a module that you're using. Let's say you create an EC2 instance, you are database and you fetch the output of that and use it in your application server to configure the database connection. So you can do various kinds of things and you can provide the input variables and you can get the output variables as well, uh, which are supported by Terraform. And you can also create different configuration for different environments, dev stage production typically. Same module behaves differently in different environments. So you can create that kind of configuration as well through the variables. You also have this interesting concept of data sources, whereas you could have something which is not in Terraform, but you can fetch, which is part of your cloud platform, and you can fetch information about that and use it in your code. For example, you've created a database using a managed service called as RDS. It is outside of Terraform, but you can fetch the connection details from it and use it in your code 
I'm going to show you how with an example that is data sources, right? So the same example. So you create something outside of Terraform manage. It's part of your cloud. So Terraform can invoke the cloud APIs and get or fetch an information about a particular object, which is outside of Terraform managed resources. And then you can fetch information about it and use it in your code. That is an interesting part of data sources. You have provisioners. So providers and provisions are two different things. Providers to connect to the cloud platform. Provisioner is to provision something like say you created a EC2 instance and you want to configure that. So this is like a configuration management tool. What Ansible typically does is configuration management. So if you want to run some script in a simplified format, if you want to run some script or configure something on that server, you can use the provisioner for that as well. And that's when you can copy a file, maybe copy or uh, run a script and so on. Then you have modules. Modules is the reusable code and you can create your own module uh, and then you can launch it in different environments and uh, so on and so forth. You can also in your code, you can invoke different modules. Like I want to create a VPC. I don't have to write the code for it. I want to create EKS cluster. I don't have to write the code for it because there is a module available already. I can just invoke it in my code. And that is the beauty of Terraform because it becomes reusable and you have tons of modules again available in uh, the same registry that I just showed you a few minutes ago. Right here, you can also, apart from providers, you can browse for the modules as well. I want to create a AWS EKS cluster, for example, right? I can uh, search for it. So maybe EKS in the modules, I may have to search for the modules specifically, or let's say there is a, oh, there is already a module for EKS here, right? And then it allows him to create an EKS cluster and uh, uh, I can look at some examples here. So you can see some examples like, oh, with EKS managed nodes and so on. And uh, uh, you have some configuration here. And uh, uh, there is uh, there is a specific example right here. So you can use it like this. Uh, or you can look at the documentation about how to uh, configure the EKS cluster. So you basically create a module, invoke it in your code, and then you provide that, oh, I want to create this with this, this is configuration. And then it goes and does everything for you. There may be hundreds of resources behind the scene, uh, which are creating different components of that platform. Right. So that's uh, how uh, it works, actually. So let's have a look at how uh, to use it. Right. Practically, I will demonstrate a few things to you. Uh, I'm not talking about every single thing because that's not possible to be covered in, let's say, the short period of time that we have. But I'll show you some key uh, features of Terraform and how it works in a, um, you know, uh, with an example. The example is the same. I want to uh, deploy a server, web server, and connect it with database, and it will be running in a, within a VPC. So first thing that I'll do is create a web server. So I will use the existing VPC. Let's assume that there is a virtual private cloud VPC like this available called as a default VPC. And then I launch a web server within that VPC is what I want to do here. Now, how do we go about doing that? First of all, I need to configure Terraform. I would have to install Terraform, which I've done already and I have the latest version of uh, Terraform 1.8.4. Uh, this is installed on my uh, Mac machine, right? So this is my iMac uh, desktop on which I've already installed it. Uh, I also need to config connect to the cloud that is AWS. So I'll have to create a user on AWS with the correct permissions that should be configured for that uh, Terraform user. I've already done this. So whatever you see in, as part of this kind of a lab guide of sorts, I've already done this. I've created a user uh, with access to EC2, with access to RDS, with access to S3, uh, in case if I want to use it, and I can show you that user configuration, which is already available to me. This is the IAM console, Identity and Access Management console on AWS. And here I have created a user group with the correct permissions, which you can see here with access to EC2, RDS, and S3. 
and to this group i have added a user which is this user okay this user has the same permission because it belongs to that same group called as terraform with the same access permissions now this user is what i want to configure with my terraform locally how do you do that is via the keys the credentials the authentication so here in the security credential i have already created a pair of key keys called as access keys and secret keys and this key is what has been configured on my system through the environment variables so there is a access key there is a secret key that's how you configure it now this has already been done and i already have the code uh, this repository demo repository which i'm going to use for the demonstration here with some base code available there so this has been done already so what i want to do now is launch an instance and show you how that can be done with the basic terraform workflow this is the terraform workflow typically you start by initializing terraform then you write the code you validate that code optionally you can make it pretty by using terraform format which is a very interesting command you can write the code in any which way style it will properly align your code make it look beautiful well aligned formatted so that's the terraform format code then comes the terraform plan which is the strength of terraform before running you can see exactly what changes are going to happen to the cloud platform how many resources will update what kind of changes exact what change so you'll see all all of that in details with terraform plan and then you can apply and then you can delete it finally a particular resource with terraform destroy so that's the typical life cycle of terraform commands like init validate format plan apply destroy and most of the time you can keep on applying 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 that is for the changes and updates uh, by making code changes and then it generates the state you can look at the state and all of that as well now very first thing that you'll have to configure if i want to install or deploy a web server like this on aws cloud i need terraform i need the credentials to connect to cloud all of that is done once that is done i can start writing the code with terraform right so how do you do that is uh, uh, this okay so i'll add the terraform configuration i'll see a couple of i see a couple of questions shadab has uh, is this going to be a full fledged course for all the questions are there uh, okay you can first of all you don't have to put the questions in private uh there is a very detailed course on terraform much beyond what i'm talking about here what i'm showing is just scratching the surface because in one hour that's what we can do the course is sufficient for you to go through it for 3 to 4 weeks and it has everything that i've spoken about in details like writing resources writing modules uh variables input and output variables in details data sources there is a section on that so it is a detailed course on Uh, terraform and there are many other courses which are part of that membership platform rama has a question any deals for students in usa to join the course uh, yes so when you go to that site uh, if you go to the membership uh, site here you will see the price in usd uh, on top of that you can apply uh, 90 ddc 15 try applying this code I think this is a universal code which will work for all the plans. So 90 DDC 15 um, is the code that you can try, and uh, that will give you. Uh, it will automatically apply the discounts, and that's how you can, uh, you know, proceed uh, with that membership as well. I would recommend you pick the nerd membership one year, and uh, uh, you can use this uh, code there as well. Okay, coming back to the configuration here. how do i go about adding this is um typically you create a file called as main.tf now you can create anything.tf that's fine right so terraform will look at all the files.tf uh the standard or a convention is you create main.tf and you add the code in that file and in the main.tf the first thing that i'm going to do here is start initializing the cloud uh provider so this is the provider for aws and i'm just saying use a provider uh with a specific version or later where does this come from it comes from the same place the provider here that is aws and this is what we are talking about so there's a hashicorp terraform provider for aws 
and you can look at the documentation how to use it how to invoke it etc and then you can uh, it could be just this much as well so instead of this i can now say uh, this is the latest code this slightly changed as well so hashicorp aws yeah hashicorp aws or registry.terraform.io hashicorp aws both are same and then we have uh, this version has changed anyways it is going to pick up 4.29 onwards so if it is latest version it will take it but i can make it compatible with what i see here right and then with that i have to create one specific if i look at the terraform providers right now i don't see any it's just been configured uh, it says required but it's not been installed yet right so i've just added that configuration for now that provider configuration and then I have to create an instance of that. So this provider called as AWS, I have to create an instance of that, meaning something like this. Why? Because if you look at AWS, there are so many different regions. So when I log into EC2 here, there are like 25 plus regions. Where are you adding this infrastructure in? You have to define that by adding an instance of that provider like this. So provider instance is called as AWS here. And in this region called as US East one. So that's the Northern Virginia right now. I'll add a, one more region later. So there will be one more instance of it. Then this has already been configured. Um, so I already have that. And then I will go ahead and install the provider here. So you have to install it before you start using it. So Terraform Minute does that. So if you look at it, it is finding the latest version of this provider and it's going to install it on my system where Terraform is installed. Terraform is installed as in the Terraform core, Terraform CLI, um, is this, it's part of the same package here. Yeah. All right, so it has been initialized. And you can look at Terraform commands, rest of the commands as well. So init, validate, plan, apply, destroy. These are the main commands that I just mentioned. There are many other commands. Some of the interesting commands are you can generate a graph, which you can put it in a file and use it with the different tools. And that shows you the resource graphs, how it is going to create, because Terraform has the ability to parallelize the resources. We're going to look at this in uh, workflow. Init is what we started with. Uh, we can validate the code we can then format it and so on uh, i would go ahead and launch an instance i'm not doing it manually this is typically i show it as part of my course but um, i'm not doing it manually i'm just going to launch it with terraform so if i had to create the instance manually what are the steps so i typically start by going to ec2 select a region launch an instance provide it a name the first configuration is the name second is the image I have to define the image, the instance type, the configuration for the instance, like T2 micro is the instance type, key pair, security key pair, that is, uh, what else? The network configuration, like VPC, subnets, and so on. And then I launch that instance finally. So there are five, six configurations like that. Um, here, I'm going to launch it with Terraform directly by writing a resource. And this is the language that Terraform uses. This is the syntax where you write a resource with the type, type can be AWS instance. AWS instance is the type of the resource as in, this is the resource which is available with AWS provider. AWS provider has the resources. Out of that, let's say we have EC2. And with EC2, we have EC2 instance. When you want to create an instance, you say, EC2, uh, this is the data source. There are two things. One is a resource. There is the second is a data source. We're looking at the resource specifically. But uh, it will be like this only. So uh, resource, yeah. Resource is AWS instance and uh, this this is the instance of the in ec2 instance so what that means is the resource is ec2 instance that is a vm and what would be the name of the vm 
one specific VM that we are launching is this, and that's what we have here and the rest of the configuration inside that resource. So the syntax looks like this, where we have the type and the name. Let me explain the syntax quickly. This is the provider, which has a registry name, which has the namespace, which has the type of provider that is AWS. Out of that, the instance type or resource type is, uh, in this case, EC2 instance and then we have the name. So that's how you write the code. So type, name, and rest of the things are just properties. The argument reference is the properties of that instance and the value for that. For example, when I want to create an EC2 instance, it's gonna look like this. AWS instance, the name of the instance, I'm calling it as front end, and what are the things I need to provide name? That is this, image, instance type, uh, maybe key pair, security group, those are the optional things, but these are the mandatory things. And then I'm just adding some tags here. So let me add this resource to, for the brevity's sake, I'm just adding it right now, rather, rather than writing it from scratch. So I add it here, and then I before applying, I want to validate it first. Syntac syntactical validation, right? So Terraform validate, that's what it does. Yeah, and the configuration is fine. It says okay. And then I have one more useful command here that I want to show you is maybe I'm not aligned it properly. This equal and equal, it's not aligned and all of that, right? So it doesn't look very pretty so far, but you can make it look pretty by using Terraform format. This time I'm just showing you what it does, right? Terraform format check and if as in what changes will it make? So it is trying to align it if you look at it. It has not aligned it yet because I just wanted to use, show you what it will do. Uh, but if I just run Terraform format, it actually does that for me. So this is a useful command. So you can just write it and then use Terraform format. It, let it do its magic. Your code will start looking prettier automatically. So that's Terraform format uh, uh, for you. A useful command uh, for sure. And then I can apply it. But before applying, there is one more interesting command that is Terraform plan. What Terraform plan does is it looks at my state file. There is no state file right now. Yeah, it's not there because I've not applied it once yet. But Terraform plan is gonna show me the diff uh, what I have, what I don't have, and based on that, what it is trying to do. What it is trying to do is it says this will be created with all the properties C++, as in it is creating everything, all the properties. This nothing is there, right? Otherwise, it would have shown a div, only the properties which are going to change, it adds a plus to it. It will add a plus right now because there is nothing out, out there right now. And this is the plan which I can apply using Terraform apply simple and when I, when I do that it runs the plan anyway so when you run terraform plan it runs the plan and then it asks me the permission should i go ahead and do that and if i say yes it's going to create the resource for me resource as in the aws instance and that i can see on my aws console uh, right away if i go to the same region northern virginia there were no instance you can see that zero instances but if i click on it now I should see one being launched with TF frontend. This is the one which is managed by Terraform. The name TF frontend came from the uh, tag called as name TF frontend. This is what I've added. And then I've added a few more tags. So you see all of the tags here. Uh, so it creates the instance with exactly the same configuration that I asked it to. And I think there was a question again as well, right? So if I want to change, I create an instance and if I want to change some properties, it's possible to do that with Terraform as well. I will show you. And there are two types of changes. One is a mutable change as in a change which can be applied in place to the existing instance. And there are some changes which are immutable as in for that you will have to recreate the instance and I'll show you both the types of changes. So this instance has been created, it tells me that it has done, it is done, creation complete. 
and if I run it again this time it is already been created with the desired state in place so it's refreshing the state it's just looking up uh, what is there locally in the state file what is there in the uh, infrastructure side and since there are no changes right so it says Terraform has compared your real infrastructure against your configuration and no, no differences are found. There are the state commands as well. So I can say state uh, list. Yeah. In my state file, there is only one resource called as AWS instance frontend and I can show that as in look at the properties of that as well so this is the state file which is created locally with whatever has been applied you know you can see that here terraform.tf state this file just was created as a result of my terraform apply command and this is the state file which can also reside in a remote location so that if i'm applying if somebody is making changes to that state state file will get, will get locked at the beginning of the run so if I'm applying and if somebody is making change at the same time, uh, only one of us can pr proceed at one time. So it automatically takes care of the collaboration that way. Now I've applied the changes. It has created the instance. I want to show you some uh, modifications, two modifications. The first modification is I'm just changing the tags. I believe I already have some tags. I will add one more. So tags are in place replacement, meaning if I change the tag and if I say plan, it tells me that it's not going to recreate anything, but it will do an in place replacement. So update in place. So it is just updating this and that's it. Since it is a in place up update, I can say Terraform apply. I can also say auto approve. So that I don't have to say yes for this. Yeah, it's just going to go ahead, shows me the plan and it's modifying that. Meaning it's just adding one more property, role fronted. That is here. Role front end. So the question from Dinesh is what if I delete the state file? Let's do that. Uh, I will take this Terraform TF state. It's as good as deleted. Let's see what it does. Yeah, so now it says I'm going to create one because it was trying to see if it has a state file and if it does not one have one, it is trying to, it doesn't have the memory of it basically. So it lost the memory of sorts, you can say. And then that's why there is a backup also for the state file. I've put that file back. Now it just has the memory. It's back, right? So it now knows that, oh, this already exists. So I don't have to do anything um, since the state file is there. Okay, so I showed you a mutating mutable change. This time I'll show you immutable change by adding a key file. I already have a key uh, SSH key pair by name demo. Let me try adding that to main.tf. Uh, this is a property to the AWS resource. How do I know what kind of properties are available? You can look at the documentation here. AWS instance, look at the properties, the arguments it supports. And based on that, like, you know, uh, you can see what is supported, what is not. Yeah, so that's uh, what it is basically. So you can look at the documentation for the properties. 
uh, I'm adding a key name and uh, Terraform plan. What it does this time is it's going to replace it. Why? Because it tells you that there is a change which you cannot apply directly. Yeah, so this requires you to have a, you know, replacement. So it will minus pluses, it will delete and create a new one. Because the change that we are making forces the replacement. It tells you that also. And that's what is going to happen. So if I say apply, it will just recreate it with the property added to it, right? So it will be a new instance. The first will be deleted, new one will be created. Uh, I'm not doing that. I'm just going ahead with Terraform destroy here with auto approve or let's run it without it. So it tells you the plan to delete it. And uh, then if I say yes, it will. Because I've not added our auto approve, it will ask me or prompt me. So it says one to destroy. And that's the same instance. There's only one instance. This will be destroyed. And I'm just saying yes here. Yeah, because I want to create a new uh, one. So this is the instance I just wanted to show you with the, you know, this lifecycle with the main commands, which include validate, like init, validate, format, plan, apply, and destroy. And now that this is there, I will launch the infrastructure. Yeah, by the way, it would have deleted the instance. It does that in a few minutes. And this time I'm going to launch the infrastructure with uh, the application and a database. The database is already been created. And this is outside of Terraform actually. Database is created with RDS. And that will be automatically picked up by the web server because this time what I'm going to do is let me first show you that it has been deleted. This instance is now gone from Northern Virginia region. It's been terminated. You can see that already, right? Now I'm switching to a different region. I want to initialize that and create something there because in this region, I have a database also switching to Singapore region. In this region, I have already created a database server with a name DevOps demo. I want that to be automatically picked up by Terraform. It does that using this concept of data sources. So let me explain the code database is created. I'm not going through that again. This is the process of creating it though. And uh, I'm going to launch the web server, but the code is already there for this. This is how we typically organize the code. I've spoken about various things conceptually, like what are the components of Terraform? You have providers. I've shown you that configuration already. Let me show you that one more time. So there is a provider here. AWS provider and uh, you can in initialize uh, it in different regions also. So there is a Singapore and then there is a Virginia region, right? And based on that, I've created two configuration. I can reference it as Singapore. That's an alias. I can reference this as uh, Virginia, right? That's the provider instances. And then for everything, then I inst or add a provider configuration and say create it in this region, AWS Singapore. And that's for everything now. And then you create different resources. So there is an instance, there is a key pair. You can also create a key pair. There is a security group, which opens up the web server related security groups, port 22 and 80. There is, there is some security group uh, uh, rules as well. And if you look at the instance, you can also define how many you want. So it can create multiples of those instance type, the image, key pair, security group, uh, some other configuration user data is what I'm adding also. So that will automatically 
initialize and provision like web server add the configuration and stuff so that is part of a script that i'm adding and then any dependencies it has so it has a dependency on key pair so you can write that you can write the lifecycle rule i'm not taking you through writing the code with hcl that's part of the terraform course a detailed one but uh, i'm just explaining the code that is already there and then there are variables like it reads the inputs through variables so that you can customize things uh, for different environments you can parameterize things and create different configurations and it is going to detect database through something called as a data source you see it here so data source automatically picks up something which is not managed by terraform it has been created outside of terraform this database is so it can detect it devops demo that is and it will automatically try to find information about it and that database name is given here search by this name find a database in rds and then connect the web server to that that's what we are doing and then rest of the things like database password it will ask it because it's sensitive data so it will ask me for a data when i run it then you define rest of the things like amis the instance type the key names and whatnot right that's all parameterized with variables there is a config.tf which does some provisioning this is what ansible typically does so after creating the web server if you want to configure something if you want to add some scripts after creating the web server let's say you want to configure something on that server add a file add a script uh, so it adds a config file which connects to the database and it adds a uh, uh, runs a sh shell script as well and the data source imports the rds which is running outside of terraform and ha has your database application server connect to it all of this is already here i am just going to initialize apply it so terraform init initializes the components that are required here right this is for provisioning this is for the aws provisioner that we want to use so it's installing everything i also need to create a key pair actually to add it ssh key pair because when i want to connect to that web server i want my key to be added automatically as well so if i go to the singapore region look at the key pairs uh, there is none okay key pair will be created security group will be created instance will be created to create the key pair i'm providing the configuration so the public key is what you take and add it to The public key comes from variable AWS key pair public key. Okay, AWS key pair is here and the public key. So that entire content of the public key has to go here. it will generate the key automatically and i think that's it so i have the configuration here which i can uh, validate and apply so terraform validate terraform plan when i use apply anyways it plans me uh, plans and shows me the uh, plan for that so terraform plan or terraform apply will anyway show me the plan now it asks me for the password because password is i've added this is sensitive variable so it does not store it anywhere it just asks me to uh, at the time of creating the resource 
And what it is trying to do is it's creating these many resources this time. Instance, and it can create multiple key pair, security group called as front end, and uh, some configuration components that is doing that. And it's going to show me this output. So it has picked up, if you look at the database endpoint, it has automatically picked it up from the data source. So this is my database endpoint. You can see it is already knows about it. CUU uh, something. Uh, that is the magic of Terraform. Again, this is a unique feature of Terraform, which you don't find in um, other tools comparative to uh, Terraform basically. So uh, this is a good feature uh, to have. And if I say yes, it's just going to configure everything for me, including the instance. So it is creating a key pair first because there is a dependency security group. This is an implicit dependency it's creating an instance. It can create multiples of those if I ask it to. And uh, that should be fully configured for me. It installs, it has a user data. It has the provisioner so that uh, it automatically configures the web server to talk to the database as well. At least the configuration should happen automatically. Yep, so it's doing that. It created the instance. After that, it's running some null resource. This basically is running a script onto my web server. Yeah, maybe it lacked something, so it had an issue. I'm going to just try running one more time to see if it works. Uh, in the meanwhile, I'll check the instance if it is created. I think this instance needs the user data to execute first in order for it to run anything else. This is going to take some time for it to be configured completely. So it's not there because you know it's still waiting for the uh, configuration of the web server actually because i have this here the instance is there and uh, if i try to connect to it over port 80 only after it is completely configured because it needs a web server to be installed i just picked up a image which is ubuntu image um, which is the default ubuntu image it doesn't have anything it is going to configure the web server it is going to install PHP and then it will uh, start working. The rest of the things will start working. I can look at the console logs as well. System log to see what's going on. And this takes time for it to appear actually. It has not been run once. So it takes time here as well. So we'll just have to wait for it. In the meanwhile, I can take more questions also. Um, Hemant asks, how to build CI CD pipeline in Azure? Is the procedure available to end? Um, well, I don't have a Terraform code for it, but there is a course that I have to run a CI CD pipeline on Azure um, with containers basically using Azure DevOps. Azure DevOps is a fantastic platform that I've, uh, in my opinion, works very well. So um, I have a course on that as well. And apart from that, uh, you may look at what Terraform provides you, like modules, for example, right? So does it have as Azure uh, DevOps module for CI/CD pipeline and so on? So you can find some modules there. You can find resources to help you create certain components. If there are specific components that you want to use uh, from Azure, you can find resources there. Um, and uh, that is what I would recommend you uh, to explore. Shadab asks, uh, the lectures are recorded or live. I am seeing large number of courses mentioned. We choose the course as per our wish in this package deal. Yeah, uh, you get all the courses. You can choose which one to take, which one to start. These are recorded courses. We have these kind of live sessions also. 
but uh, the courses when we say on the platform and the package that you get with the membership are the recorded courses primarily and uh, we have live less sessions which happen uh, often as well um, and rest of the courses are recorded so these are self paced you can start any time with any of the topics that you want and we have we are building these journeys for you also like there's a devops engineer journey i'm building up uh, you know additional like devsecops journey there is a uh, there would be different journeys like that which you can take also and start uh, your courses and learning from uh, on your own uh do we have anything with devsecops yes sure so if you're looking at the courses on the platform i have created a course on devsecops for linux foundation uh which is also available here on this platform so you can take that course uh very comprehensive in my opinion uh the devsecops course it takes you through i think almost all the aspects of devsecops right from component analysis to saas uh you know sca to you know software component analysis sca the uh, saas to software static analysis uh, dynamic analysis compliance kubernetes uh, uh, security runtime security image security how do you scan your kubernetes images and what not right so this is the dashboard that we have by the way this is the 90 day challenge so once you log in and become a member um or become a member and log in you have access to the challenge this is the 90 day challenge mission by mission you can complete uh this is my uh, progress like which is my last course i was accessing this is from the community you have the journeys that you can define like sys of journey you complete these courses you can change that to other journeys as well and uh, courses is where you'll find a devsecops course a very detailed course on devsecops actually show the topics uh, here so supply chain analysis sast uh, docker file deployment and uh, security dast with open zap so on i'm using most of the open source tools i did a lot of research for this uh inspect for compliance scan along with ansible to actually apply the uh, uh bring the system into compliance system security auditing with that is with ansible kubernetes deployment um different aspects of kubernetes security right from compliance checks and all that secret management with vault runtime security monitoring with falco ergo uh, events and ergo workflows and those kind of things so you have uh, all of this uh, as part of uh, this course actually it's a very uh, useful course on devsecops um there's a question from ravi at i'm if i'm uh, attending the one conf in bangalore i don't have plans to do that yet but uh, i will check on it this this year i want to start attending more events um i'm planning for that but uh, nothing of right now i think it's in june 23rd 22nd 23rd interesting i'm going to check on this let's see but i've not planned to attend this yet uh thanks for letting me know okay this is a course that i'm creating this is a course on argo cd actually uh this is a canary deployment that i'm uh, running right now this is uh, the course in making this is for my training as well and this will go and um, uh, get created as a new course so uh, canary releases blue green deployments um how do you configure ci you can also configure ci with argo workflows you can create a complete ci cd pipeline with argo workflow argo rollout argo cd argo image updater so i'm building a course on that right now that's what this is about all right going back to the terraform resource uh, uh this should have been ready by now i'm just going to run terraform apply once for the web server to be configured seems to have been applied uh it gives me the output also in fact i don't even have to go to aws to see the resource this is a database this is my web server uh this is the public ip of that so everything that i need to know i already have here 
so uh, the same IP, I think 61. And you can see this is a web server. It's already been configured to talk to the database. I think it should have been configured to talk to the database. Let me connect and check. connected to the web server checking the configuration for it so as you can see uh, okay one thing that is missing is db name i think i did not create the db properly with the actual db name that's why this is missing otherwise this should have uh, worked uh, as you can see it has added this configuration automatically this is from the data source so even if you have a resource outside of terraform it can fetch the information from there, add it, and then you can configure it as well. And you should most likely see it with Terraform uh, as well. So Terraform state shows me now uh, all of these or should show me all the component that it has created, instance, key pair, security group, and everything else. And it has this data source as well, which you can describe so this is the data source fetched so it has picked up you can see it has queried and picked up a lot of information about that database as well including its uh, host name including the port including uh, version of the database the endpoint with the port number uh, security group subnet group maybe security group as well so uh, port number and, and whatnot, right? So uh, it has picked up all the information. It is storing it in the state itself, which you can see. And you can use this in your code anywhere. You can use this as output. You can use this as an input somewhere. And uh, whatever it created, it shows me right here, right? Now, uh, I can just add a database uh, name also. I think I don't have that configured, the actual database. That's why this doesn't work. So I'll have to do some further modification, which will take time. I'm going to skip that part for now. So, uh, but you, you get an idea of it, right? So you can use Terraform to do uh, build the infrastructure, uh, fetch the information from somewhere else. We talked about providers. We talked about resources, the variables input and output, data sources like database being configured from the web server directly, provisioners to actually run some scripts here or copy files here. And modules can be reused for various purposes. If I want to create VPC, I can invoke a module called as VPC. And that creates then all the VPCs, subnets, route tables, uh, security groups, and anything else that I want uh, in a Jiffy, right? So that's how you can start using Terraform. Any final questions? I'm gonna start uh, destroying this. And also, this will clean up. Uh, everything for me. Yeah, this is going to just clean up everything uh, except for the database because database is created outside of Terraform. I'll just delete it from here. The database will be gone from here. Uh, the EC2 instance, the key pair which was created, you can see that security group which was created, uh, all of that, it is going to clean up now. With Terraform destroy, that's what it does. So just like how you can create it easily, you can also clean up very easily with uh, Terraform uh, itself. That, that is Terraform destroy. Okay, any final questions here? Uh, oh, I just, there's a power cut. I 
we should have backup on in a minute uh, but till then you can find the ghost version of me yeah we're back all right so this is done so you can see it is cleaned up it's all terminated uh, key pair should have been gone so is the security group uh, by name front end which was created by terraform that is gone right uh, there's uh, this database security group which i'll delete but if you are managing it with terraform our session here right so yeah it's giving some issues headaches there so thank you very much for attending this session i hope it was useful for you the recordings for the sessions will as usual be added to our um, let's say the youtube channel as well so if you haven't subscribed to the youtube channel uh, if you are a member you'll already get a notification but if not uh, you can still get uh, this recording on our YouTube channel called as School of DevOps. So you can follow us there and you will have access to the recording from uh, there as well, right? So I'm sharing this in the chat. And with that, we will conclude our session. Uh, so thank you very much for attending today's session on Terraform. Next week, we will take a new topic, the new mission on uh, Kubernetes, that is. So thank you and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.